Chairman Mike, how are you? So we're going to call the general government any meeting to order. We're a couple of minutes late, but we had a little technical difficulty. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Oh. Hate to see a die for a lock of stock in a second. <laughs> There is, we need to strike number 11. Chad said that we're not ready to take action on that number 11 of construction. Anything else on the agenda? Not all in favor? All right. How about the minutes from our May 13th meeting? True. Second. Question. Question on uh, minutes. Okay, so as I'm looking through the minutes, um, the section, the paragraph about uh, Corp Council providing information regarding a legal letter from the attorney representing the Fair Society. So there's one set I kind of um, have, a, have a, a disagreement with. Um, I agree on one hand, on the other hand, I don't. So the letter indicated the Fair Society's desire to terminate their MOU with the county and eliminate ties to the fairgrounds with the county. Now, I agree that uh, I think that that was Malia that they commented. But as I read the MOU, I don't interpret that, I don't agree with that interpretation of it. So, could we just add a few words or a little bit of language that just states that that was for? Corporation Council's interpretation. Because as I read it, I don't see anywhere in that letter from their attorney where number one, it says they want to eliminate ties to the fairgrounds. I don't well, they see did. That they actually want the fairgrounds. They want the opposite of that. They want to get the fairgrounds. They don't want to eliminate ties to the fairgrounds. They eliminate ties with the county's MOU with the fairgrounds. But I don't that they're stating that they want to they want to um, they refer to the post county's rewrite of the MOU and they state over and over in here again that that MOU is still a valid and binding legal document they don't say they want to eliminate they don't I guess the issue I have is they're not using those words I don't see anywhere in the letter from your attorney where those words are used words i think and i don't have the letter in front of me but i think they do say they want to end their relationship with polk county and that's not that's not the same as saying that they want to terminate their mou because they're saying in here about the mou rewrite and referring to it to me those things are not equating if they end the relationship with the county they end their mou because if they're going to have a relationship with us they have to have an mou I agree. Yeah, well, you don't have an MOU. Why don't, we, why don't we get a motion to amend the minutes? And then it's we'll, going to come to a vote whether or not right. we're going to okay. amend the yeah, minutes. Yeah, let's just do that. We're going to make a motion to amend. Motion to amend the minutes. Make a motion to amend the minutes to reflect that um, this was Corporation Council's interpretation of the legal letters. There's a second uh, motion. And discuss it, and then we're going to vote on it. I think uh, Chad maybe mentioned the key word to start with is terminate the relationship. Yeah, I have a little problem with the MOU because there's what's in existence between the county and the fair society is a 2003 agreement. Like that agreement does not use the words memorandum. That that specifically, I think, is what they're. All right. Is there more discussion on changing the minutes or on the motion to change the minutes? If not, we're we'll probably just to save time. We're just going to do a roll call vote, Mike. Right? Yes, we're going to change. Yes. Oh. 
No. Anything else on the uh, on the minutes of the May thirteenth? Not all in favor. If anyone has any conflicts of interest on the agenda, just let us know when we get to that item. Public comments. Any public comments? No, sir. Right. Um, any supervisors here not seated as committee members that would like to share any information? Right. Any announcements or committee information that we need to receive? All right, we'll have an update discussion on the LHB presentation and the government center and Yeah, just as a Kick off and I'll hand it off to Mo here. I, I just want to say we have been analyzing this uh, consistently now, past few months, and doing everything we can to kind of take into what your suggestions were, kind of the feedback we're getting, and to assess the needs of uh, the county staff, county citizen citizenry. We did come up with significant, I think, progress, uh, and overall, I can say that you know things we kept in mind are uh, serving the public, making it customer centric, keeping it efficient for uh, the staff, and thirdly, increasing security uh, for staff and citizens. And with that, we really, I think, uh, done some things to address them without doing things like remodeling a lot of the building or even moving the boardroom upstairs. Instead, we're looking at ways that are cost efficient to move furniture uh, into places that are available to get those folks who need access to our staff who may have difficulty. Uh, we can move them to trade places with certain uh, offices up here. So the bottom line is, is you're going to see a report that shows what we deem are essential things like the heating and cooling system, uh, a roof, you know, and those types of things uh, that are long overdue, and uh, you won't see any paint cans or uh, uh, new carpet or anything like that in there. So, Mo, do you want to kick off the? Sure, as, as been said, we took a really strong look at this with the division heads and LHB with Anne and her team, and as we went through looking at what was the priority of our, our project and our priority was naturally the mechanical side of it. And that's what we were looking at primarily. <clears throat> we're still keeping the focus customer centric and security of our building um, with that. But um, as you see here, the first got two handouts, one stapled together, two pages. That is the primary focus of the, of the, of the project that concentrates on the mechanicals and the needs of what we need in this building for mechanicals. Um, it's the road replacement. Uh, the government center window replacement was scoped down to specific windows, not every window in the uh, building. That was ones we know that frost up in the winter time or have uh, leak issues in the, in the um, rainy seasons. Uh, ADA toilets and on all three levels there. Uh, they're, they're broken out now on one with the main level and then one with the upper level and ground level. Uh, with you more issues, you, you want us to ask questions or wait till you're all done or ask them as you go to this list? Um, when do we? Um, either or, you want to wait till I get done or you can ask as you go. That's well, when you say roof replacement, my first question is what roof? That is the main roof on the government center. So on uh, this building? On this building only. Okay. Not the uh, uh, health. Center. Not this one. And not that one else. Okay. okay. That was replaced easily, but that's the small penthouse with one of the top. And that includes the ballast and the carbon mix. Um, we have the uh, 88 door upgrades uh, for wheelchairs, uh, government chiller, uh, the government heating system, uh, heat water ventilation system, 
Next, when we were updating those, we have the building automation at units, electronic components for actuating this. What we have now is air, air compressors, air actuators. Those change to electronics. Um, water softener, the hot water replacement, fire alarm replacement for the building, and also upgrading our power distribution system in there. The next the question about your water softener. Yes. So why is that in the scope of this work? Why do we need a water softener? The water softener helps not only with um, health issues, um, with controlling manganese and that. It helps with our fixtures and fixture life. I know most people and businesses in the village do not require a water softener. I'm just wondering why we do here. Because I, I would almost say majority of the people in the village of Boston Lake that's already treated. And I know they're putting a new treatment system for manganese. The yep. village has got project. And I would just like to see some data that supports us spending. How much is a water softener? $54,000. Yeah. We'll provide a little more detail on that for you. Exactly why and show us the data or is someone looking at the data that says, you know, yes, you need a water softener. Because we've looked and analyzed the water. Have you guys done that? We haven't. We've been going off of Yeah. We'll get those numbers for you. Bye. On the other, on the, the second page of that is the generator replacement, uh, the interior lighting lamping, uh, LED lights, um, the government center controls, uh, security. Security we have down for. Um, Allowing more cameras in the system that we have blind spots for security reasons. Parking lot exterior lighting is approximately four poles outside for better uh, lighting for security for the building uh, during these dark hours. And then the chase reconstructs insulation. Those are the issue we have with the building where our water lines run on the outside of our external buildings. And with the intent of the design in the 70s was that air would circulate up through there keep our pipes from freezing, that doesn't happen. So those piping needs to be moved out of there and insulated so that we don't have any problems. Now, as Finn said, we did take, we have, we've had many meetings with um, not only division heads, um, with LHB on looking at security and everything with that building. Um, so this was the bare essentials of what we needed for this project, looking at that number and seeing where we were at. And then if you can go to the third one, Things that we came to and recommended that along with this project it would be good for our county and, and good for facilities because we did look at that. You know, a contentious issue was moving the border room. Internally, we looked at office space and how we can move things and still supply that customer centric, one level uh, approach to the county. What we came up with was actually the, the fourth line down department service windows and openings. That's our major, that is the most renovation for the building that's changed. Those are customer service windows for the clerk's office, deeds and treasurer's office, land information office. Um, so that people have a secure area to come up. Our employees are secure behind the counters. They can pass through documents, get their information they need without having um, closed doors when they walk into the facility. The cabling replacement is um, our IT stuff. That is one component that can be removed and done at a later date. Um, ADA stair issues were the elevator upgrades was the placards and signings, the stair treads on the, the rails going up on the stair treads and the actual handrails is what was not compliant with the ADA stuff there. Uh, building automation for the human, uh, human resource side of it. Now that's the only portion that would be in that other building. And that's upgrading those air actuators again so that we have one system that's uh, conducive to this system. Uh, it'll work the same way with the uh, heating control. And as you can see, there is a factor uh, in this for an 8% inflation act uh, value in here because prices are high right now. Inflation is very high for materials and hard to get things. Um, so that's in there. Um, and with this, secondary page uh, all in with the project we we're just under seven million dollars which um, from the start when we looked at moving offices and moving knocking down walls 
um, we really bring that number down to this. And then at the bottom is the is the, is the schedule, and these are milestone dates for completion, not start dates. Just so we can talk more on that if you have questions. That's where we stand right now with the project. We're looking at um, hopefully if you have more questions for that, but then have the same discussion at the um, county board at the Cal. That's fine. I'll just wait till Cal. And if you need more information before that meeting, um, let me know. Uh, or pass it on to Ann if I can answer it or if I need something. Yeah. Well, one of my questions is going to be where does all this lay out in the project versus just, you know, on a piece of paper? So when you talk about windows and doors and access points and like the phasing when it will be done or on the plan. How did, how did you identify it versus because the way it looks here is the department had said I want a window for access. Someone had to evaluate that location and budget it. I would like to see the plan that shows highlighted where all these activities are going to take place in the building. Oh, like the customer service windows, all of it. Where, where that goes. Yeah, okay. okay. Everything on here. I think if you're going to present present this and get to try to get the board to approve this. I would need more than this to approve this personally. That's just me. So this is more of a master plan phase to define the scope before you move forward. So if you look at the schedule, the next step is preliminary design. Yeah. And really you can't begin that until we have a defined scope. Otherwise, we're designing things that may not be a value to you. Sure. So we've been working through conceptually talking through and looking at Wold's report to sure. define this master. So this is setting the stage, and then we would start a preliminary design where we're creating floor plans, looking at the details to actually, right now we have no floor plans. We've developed the building model, so we have this electronic representation. We've been working through some block plans to look at where departments might be being moved, which it sounds like is more furniture-based now, but we could highlight the location intended for the windows, but we really don't we'll have, have anything any. yet. And it yeah. wouldn't be until that August. I think for bonding, we need to get signatures for the funding in order to allow us to move forward and have the funding. And then, Chad, I don't know if you want to chime in on the funding portion of it. Well, I think capacity and how, how it says for timeline. Yeah, I mean, to go to market, the next phase is I got to have a, a resolution in July that allows us to allow our investor to go out to market and pull options and all that. Uh, LHB is supposed to have the hard numbers for the plan. I told them I really need it first of August because we're going to have to give lenders firm numbers uh, when we go out to them. Going to compress our window to September, October, November to decide who we want to go with to get everything set up. That's a really, really tight window. Uh, it's doable with local banks, I, I do believe, especially with some relationships we have. But if we're going to look at getting a bond rating, going to market for a bond, all the stuff that's involved in capital bonding, that's a lengthy process. August would be slammed up against the wall. And I do I, I do want to point out that there's actually nobody in this room who's gone to market for a bond before for the county. It's a, it's a new process for all of us. So. If we're going to hit 2021 and borrow within 2021, I honestly believe August is the absolute drop dead to have everything. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're, they're pretty darn good. I mean, I haven't, I haven't pulled a new quote since the one I gave you from Bremer back last year. Yes, so back to my question that we were still on. I just think, personally, I wouldn't support approving this as a master plan with these documents. So I'd be a no vote on the project. Go forward. Are we looking for more prints showing where each well, one of these are? It's hard. It's hard. I think for a supervisor to you know to say, okay, you want me to approve uh, borrowing eight million dollars based on department heads having a conversation with you and with an architect. That's what we're going to go borrow eight million dollars for because you three. Have all said, hey, we think this is a good idea. 
I think you got to give the county board more information than this. If how I feel, I if I was a, if, if you know, and I were the owner of the building, and as an owner of the building, just showing us numbers and putting a name to, oh, we're going to put a roof on. Why are you putting a roof on? Okay, so oh, there's it doesn't say that though. You say you need windows. You say, yeah, we'll just. Our assumption was that the wall report helps you find the deficiencies within your building. I wasn't impressed with the wall report okay. either. And we did review that, and this is our interpretation yeah. of where we agree and disagree. I get it. So if you'd like us to provide more explanation with each item, that would be helpful. Um, we could do that because I really feel that in order to meet the schedule of going out to bid by December. I'm not interested in rushing, so we have to meet chat's issues. To me, borrowing $8 million so chat doesn't feel rushed is not a priority. Priority is watching out for the taxpayers and making sure we're doing the right project at the right time. Okay. And I and I don't know that the board doesn't think we should use some of the money we've been given by the government to do this project, that it should all be funded. So I just want to make that statement here. I don't want to be rushed into spending $8 million without knowing all the options. And if this is going to have to go fast, this supervisor is going to vote against the project. We'll provide more detail on the line items for it. And funding. I think from my seat in the house, if we had a schematic of the floor and have highlighted with numbers each of those where that work was to be done, it would give me a decent scope to understand whether I think it makes sense to. I know that might be more work than you're interested in doing, but it's a pretty big project. And I think we need to have a pretty good understanding of what aspects I need. And, and maybe at some point, this group should take a tour and be inspecting these things and so they can be described to us. So we can go back to the taxpayer and say, yep, it's the right thing to do at the right time. I can't do that today. So I have a couple of questions for Chad. Number one is, what is the county's bond rating? We don't have a bond rating. So you have, we have to go out and get a bond rating. That's what I'm saying. If we went that process, we have to get a bond rating. That, that's a big job. Yeah, yeah that's, gonna, that's a big deal. Um, do we have any guidance on if we can use any of those uh, recovery monies towards the building or not? Do we have an opinion on that? Yeah, I can. We we're going to touch it on that one line item, but I can do that now, actually. Yeah. So in front of you, you have the quick fact sheet that says this is what the money could be used on regarding infrastructure presently limited to water, sewer, and broadband. However, there's a clause in there that WCA has been exploring and the counties are looking at that there's a formulaic method that if we can show revenue loss based on a pattern from 2016 through 2020, after we extract all, and I won't go into deep detail, you have to extract all federal dollars and then do calculations. If we can show revenue loss, it's possible that the county can claim all the money received from the ARPA funds as revenue loss during the COVID in which case we can move the ARPA money from the restricted categories to the fund balance. And if you move it to the fund balance, then that gives the board the option to spend that money on a wide array of things as opposed to the scoping of the interim final rule. Um, we have an investment committee meeting on the 25th to meet with our financial managers park that money somewhere more beneficial than just sitting in a checking account uh, until that money is ready to be used up. I'm working with my team and I've got a meeting with the Northwest Wisconsin finance directors at the end of this month. And we're gonna discuss how people are figuring out the revenue lost and, and try to figure out that piece so that I can tell the administrator, yes, I can sign off that we lost this much revenue and it can be transferred. Is it has to be clear and auditable. But if it can be done that way, then all those restrictions on the sheet in front of you are gone because it's in the fund balance. And the only restrictions you have is what government's legally allowed to use money. Uh, uh, Brand first, I think she beat you to it. Oh. So I just um, had a meeting this week with the governmental municipal financial advisors. <coughs> Um, the county does go need to obtain a bond rating. 
that's gonna, in my opinion, that might throw a wrench kind of in the tentative schedule as well. And then two, something to think about is to go with S&P over Moody's, to obtain a bond rating, because there's a big difference in how those two do their evaluations and what would maybe be most beneficial to us. Right, and our we, PMA handles are, there are financial advisors with both counties, and then we also have a lot of local relationships. The last time the county actually borrowed from anything significant, you all will recall this before my time, but it's the only debt we have. It was with Bremer Bank because we saved several hundred thousand dollars on legal fees. So you can go to the capital market or you can borrow locally depending on what rates are. Yeah, we had a bond rating then because we were going to go through that process. Right, but we have to renew the bond rating. Oh, I see. And it's about 50 grand, give or take, PMA told me for a bond rating plus the legal fees. So we went through that whole process and then Bremer came up and gave us a better deal. So it was like, well, we're not going to do it. We might be able to do that this year. So, Mr. Rock, I think you're the well, question I had is on infrastructure with water. Would the, the bathroom processes of this bill be included in a infrastructure water plan? As I read the interim final guidance, I think I can sign off when I have to do the submissions and the attestations. I think as I interpret the final guidance in the meetings I've been in, that yes, that would qualify. I, I think that qualifies. There's quite a few items on this list that are tied to water. There, there are a few things, and, and you know, Mr. Nelson referred to eight million. And, and really, I think think of it as our budget last year, Chris, when we we said, "Here's what the administrator is recommending," and then here are some menu items. So, especially on that back on the second page, are menu items, so to speak, to say we're not saying they have to be done now. We're just saying that there are things that. You know, since we're beyond end of life periods now on most of these things, we're going to have to do them at some point. I'm all for that. Right. And then the front page, you might be able to go through here and say, what is it that might be able to be used through the ARP funds? Uh, there are some things in here you could say, hey, let's don't do that. I mean, the Windows is a good example. It wasn't on our original because uh, when the Windows, they gave us a big fat estimate for all the windows to do them all at once. And we just said, you know what, we've got to wait. When we remove so many things from this, we said, hey, you know what, we're, we're still lowering the total cost. What is it of the windows that really have to be done? And so, and we can let all of you look at that, I'm sure, but but we, we did a very basic analysis of his window is totally cross covered in the winter, you know, and the water comes in. Other windows have bugs coming through them. And so we just said, if we had the money and had the opportunity, those need fixed sooner rather than later. Mr. Pritchard, I think you had another question for me. Are we talking 8 million or 7 million? A couple of pages, I think, totaled up to 7 million. This guy is 7 million. That no, was I off by 8 million? Yeah, just, I was fighting. I was giving the actual million ball. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I question, or, or I just wanted to confirm. Do I understand that this does not embody any changing around of moving the this room upstairs, et cetera, et cetera, that we had uh, earlier proposals? Is that what's being left out? Is Correct. That, Correct. We. We looked at the customer service and leaving the boardroom here by installing customer service windows to open up those two. But, but there's no re reconfiguration of the walls within this building, so to speak, in this, this right here. Then I, I guess to raise this question about building costs, and, and then we've got interest rates are down, building costs are up. And I'm wondering if we need to have any discussion. If we're looking at an 8%. At this point, are they expected to go down again? Or is it I, I, I think that, at this point in time? I, I think that's a difficult one. And it's tea leaf reading, in my opinion, because building costs are up, interest rates are really low. The so building costs could come back down, but interest rates are expected to rise. Are they going to rise? It depends on what economic theory you apply, you know, but there's, I don't know. Rise. 
I, I my personal opinion is interest rates are going to go way up. Um, costs may come down, but rates are going to rise. Rates are historically low right now. Building costs, from what I've heard, are historically high. So, Chad or Mo, follow up on Mike's question a little bit. Yeah, you guys put in this eight percent inflation. What did you put in this budget for contingency? So you got six hundred seven six hundred thousand dollars of contingency money. And what would you what would you use that contingency money for? Typically, any contingency would be for change orders. It would happen that way, or an inflation cost that came out that was not planned for. So you really have eighteen percent of fluff in this budget. Right, the eight percent is more on construction costs. Your contingency, typically, as when we built the highway facility, is anything that changes, a change order that comes up, or as we're doing something, we come into a problem or an issue, or the committee decides, you know what, as long as we're doing this, we want to do a different upgrade. But my my point, I would guess, is is that eighteen percent in one bucket, or are you going to truly track a, a subcontractor asks for a change order, says, hey, you're ordering this. Uh, Make up air unit, or you're ordering something right now. And when I originally bid the job, it was a hundred bucks. Now it's a hundred and eight dollars. You're going to use the eight dollars for that, or you? Or how do you? How do you separate those two pots of money? One is so if you don't use it, and if it's not, if it's eight percent not used for cost overruns for material costs, is that eight percent get gobbled up into the ten percent? Bucket too that you're going to use that whole pot for contingency. Yeah. So keep in mind that these are at a very high level. So the next step would be is if you gave us people to proceed with design to develop the drawing at, at the end of preliminary design in August, or depending if Chad needs it sooner, we would do another cost study. Right now, this is our best guess for the scope and what we see in the building. Then at the end of final design or in midpoint of final design. Another cost estimate. So there'd be two additional cost estimates, and we're we're sure. we're setting the, the max budget of what you're comfortable, and then we're refining it. So if there's additional money that we discovered that we were over on one or under, that gets adjusted, and we work through that. We're trying to stick within the scope. In construction, we put it out to bid whether you choose a general contractor or a construction manager. We're defined. We we're managing that budget to work within. They're giving you a hard bid. So whether the air handling unit goes up or down after bid date, that's on them. That doesn't get reflected to you. Contingency is like always saying, used for the unforeseen conditions, added scope. So we're managing whether the eight percent on bid day, you'll know where those numbers are. Okay. That I would suggest keep that eight percent, whether you only need it six, three, whatever. You roll that into your contingency, and you're holding your max project until the very end. And then at the end, or at a certain point in construction, you could determine if you wanted to add more scope on the as needed. Yeah, my feeling about that is that, it, and I think you hit it a little bit better there, that we're defining the scope of work. To me, I don't want to base this project on how much money we have. So to me, whether it's $6 million, $5 million, $10 million, if the windows frosted up, we got to fix the frosted up window. So to me, I think the way it should be presented more is this is scope of work. This is what scope of work will probably cost. That would help if that was said first. And I agree with Dan 100%. To define scope of work and get supervisors to define on scope of work, you better have a couple more meetings before you feel like you're in a pinch to get supervisors buying in on scope of work. Than just off of a budget and a sheet of paper. I don't need to get into details now. I'm just saying for your presentation to the board at the committee of the whole, I'm just giving you some recommendations so you don't have me doing this there. So it seems to me like you'd like a little bit more history on how we got to these recommendations, work and background of I think it, again, I trust everyone in this room. But like Dan said, if I don't see you or show me that window frosted up or tell me this window frost, and I don't need to go to every room, but I think it'd be a due diligence to give the supervisor. We talked about once giving the tour and we did a little video show of it. 
why we need these things done. But I think you should refresh us as why do we need this project? I think even definition of useful life. I realize we've got that on, but what is the definition of useful life and where are we at in that sequence? What's the useful life of the replacement? Because obviously technology changes, there's things that go along with that to help us make better decisions. Right. Installer at all. You don't have to raise your hand. That's whoever comes. I don't raise my hand, Mike. I just I, I, I've gotten reprimanded many times for that's like county board. In. County board. County board's different. Uh, but I guess coming back and following what Chris was saying, uh, it, and I'm not advocating it, but I, I asked the earlier question about moving rooms around one thing or another, and I think that was decided by someone that that would not be essential and therefore is not in the scope of the project. I don't know that this committee discussed it specifically, but, but this uh, stapled together sheet are things that I, in my mind from the presentation here, I'm saying these are things that should be done now, whether it's because of scope of, or, or uh, useful life frosted windows or whatever it may be. And then we've got this other sheet of 600 to 830,000 of things that we're probably going to have to do and we can think about doing them now or maybe should do them now. Is that essentially correct if, uh, in my interpretation or am I missing something? That is correct. And Mike, and I, like with Mike there though, I. I, I feel the same way as Mike does, but I also thought we said, if we were gonna be tearing this room apart, if it made sense to move a wall or two, we should be considering it. Now you're saying we're not doing, gonna consider that. And I thought we always gave you the recommendation that we do wanna do that. We looked at that, that there's many other things in beyond just pages of spreadsheets. Why didn't we get to see those? Happy to share that because we didn't analyze the uh, and I don't have those numbers in front of me, but the cost savings of what it's going to be to tear out the ceiling to make this part of the mechanical and what departments to prioritize. Yeah. What you, I want to say it was around 200,000. I, I personally feel like if we're going to go down this road and if our board isn't given the opportunity to say, hey, if we're in this room tearing it out and we're tearing this whole room apart. And you're not going to replace these windows while you have everything torn out in here. I would say replace the windows. I mean, in my experience in construction, that would be a that would be a we would be doing a poor job if we gave you the okay to change the mechanic room, change the ceiling tile, change the lighting, change your your uh, process for uh, all your data stuff. And we repaint this room, put all new carpet. And a year from now, that these windows start frosting out. Now you got a contract in here tearing out that system, tearing out that, repatching all the drywall. That makes no sense. And if I'm on the board in a couple of years and we skip that step, that I will feel like I didn't do my job. So I, I think we need to see the bigger picture. And if the number goes up, the number goes up. I mean, we were, you know, we were basing a lot of our meetings and stuff off. Previous meetings on um, the concern of having to move departments and moving the board from up there, and is that a necessary cost for just the efficiencies, the gain efficiencies? So we looked at that from a, uh, another overview. Said, well, we can gain those efficiencies um, without moving the board from up there and without knocking down the walls. That we could still get the customer service uh, that we were required, that we're looking for, and to uh, keep everyone on the main level but still secure our employees at the same time. So we were looking at that as a, as, as here in the um, comments from the committee and the board of, you know, we don't want to move the boardroom or it, that's going to be expensive to move the boardroom and switch this and add walls and offices here. Um, so we took a deep hard look at that with that, you know, and, you know, COVID helped it naturally because our work had changed. And so we were able to, with our existing offices say, you know what, can make this work. We can move this department downstairs, part of this department downstairs, move veterans and ADC upstairs so our veterans have a single floor access to come in here. 
So that's kind of why we looked at this. We, uh, um, you know, naturally, and again, you know, I'll just throw this out. This, you know, we're, we're in a 1974 building. You know, that's a 2004, 2002 edition on there. End of life services come in very quickly on most everything in the new section. Um, windows are 1970s, floor coverings are done in that, but we kept that scope right where we heard from the board and you guys so that we can still gain that efficiency and that customer service that angle, but not overinflate a project so that um, constituents are on you that we're just making the place look pretty for everyone having new offices. And and in this in this thing, there's no furniture or anything like that in there. And, and Anne can attest when you buy office furniture and I bought it for the new highway department, that is a large eye item. And we looked at that from and to do that through the budget process. So um, that's kind of why that scope got taken out of there and we went with the windows, customer service windows. As we were um, listening to the, the board members um, concerns about like moving walls and stuff like that. In this room here, you know, mechanically, yes, all the lights will get replaced, the ceiling tiles will get replaced, um, ventilation, the actuators will change for that. Um, I got to say, though, yep. when you say the board members were concerned about moving walls, I'm a board member. Yep. I was never concerned about moving walls. The only comment I ever heard was it was four hundred and some thousand dollars to move the boardroom. Yep. And we said, do we really start need to be moving everything? But I know we've been pretty clear that if you were in a room and it's time to upgrade this room or move a corridor yep. and change accesses here, that I, I was totally under the perception that you would lay that out to us in your plan, in your design. If we're going to pay people to design this scope of work, we need, even if we don't bid it all out, or maybe it doesn't all go forward, we, I thought I was going to see a plan that had scope of work on there that would include things that make sense. So we all sit with our back to, to each other, right? And you got a screen there and a screen there. This is not, this is not, a good way to run a board meeting where we have to turn around and turn our backs to everybody. So, you know, I don't know how to run your business here. I don't know who should work and talk to each other in every room, but there are things here that I've said now that I think you understand as a board member and someone that's got to prove this money. You know, we never, I never said, don't tear a wall down. So I don't want to make sure that's clear that I never said that. And I never heard any other board members really say that. So I just, I have comments. Um, I guess what I would find helpful, and I don't know how big a deal it is to put something like this together, but I think for all of us, and not just people in this committee, but the entire board, what would be beneficial to me is to have um, a synopsis or an outline or talking points in kind of a non technical, non uh, expertise language to explain to just kind of lay people taxpayers of why these things why we need to do these things that's helpful to us in explaining it and helping to sell it to our constituents uh, just things kind of kind of broken down you know? i guess something like that would be helpful And that's on a real dead end. What were we supposed to do here today? I don't know. Oh, we're supposed to be voting on something? Where are we leaving it or what? Our, our hope was that by giving you a preview, letting you ask questions, express concerns, or whatever, that would enable us to present it to the committee as a whole in a way that's more useful. Sure. So this is helpful to hear this today. Yeah. Right. And if what we can do by the board meeting, we'll do. Sure. So is it on the board meeting to be voting on any amount of money or voting on the scope of the project or doing any taking any action? I think in the committee of the whole, it just says we discuss it. But then when you come out of committee of the whole, it will say, you know, you can't take action on anything <laughs> discussed in the committee of the whole. Do you need us to act on anything right now? Today? Or no, committee of the whole. No, you, no, but it, we need to start creating that sense of awareness that if we want to do this within our financial plan, 
okay, and, and so that we don't drop that levy so much in 2022 that we have to do a referendum to get it back up in 2023. When would you need us to take action on a scope of work? Right, that's what this is a scope of work. When do you need us to take action on a scope of work so you guys can have the correct budget? Well, I, the, I need the LHP has told me that the uh, preliminary design budget is going to be pretty close to the final. And they're on the schedule for that in August to give me the preliminary design budget, which is what I really need. As far as what LHP direction needs or Mo needs, I have to defer to them in order to arrive at that. Because what I need is their deliverable. We wouldn't want to proceed, and we were hoping to start our design meetings in July in order to meet our schedule. Um, and won't feel comfortable meeting. I mean, there's certain things that if, if we know for sure, like mechanical systems, and we, you know, there's things we could start on, but really like to proceed with confidence from the board that they're going to support the decision. The other way we've approached this is there have been have to have have to have bucket and a nice to have bucket. Want to think about it that way. The nice to have can be all. In that we're, we, you know, we have an idea of how it fits within the total gross budget. For example, the relocation of the relocation department. We have estimates. We realize that that number we presented today is just only going to go up based on the budgets that we created for the, I think it was four or five departments being reconfigured. Uh, we could always proceed with those, but you're going to pay for design in preliminary design, whether or not you choose to accept to Structure or accept the bid. We often design them, bid them as an alternate, and it gives you flexibility in where your bids end up and your total budget ends up being. Um, but you don't have to proceed with construction as well. So this is going to sound like an oversimplification. It's probably not possible to do it that way. But it seems to me like we could take this list and do it A, B, C. A are the things that are mechanical and mandatory. B are the things that make sense because it ties to A. And C are the things that would be nice because we're in the middle of the project. Then I can take, without knowing construction, I can take a look at that and say, well, this is the go ahead. This is 5 million of this budget, and but it's stuff that's got to happen. These are the things that it makes sense, and that's going to add another 1.5 because we're having to do those. And these are the others that we really should consider, but probably aren't mandatory. If we had it spelled out like that, that gives me a lot for my seat in the house, gives me a lot better way of understanding how to evaluate it. In our strategy, I think we thought that we were presenting it that exactly. by saying based in are the things that we feel you should. That's what they've done here. The, the added scope are your nice to have, you don't have to. The only thing that's missing in that is what additional scope should we really be considering? Those so are the things we didn't do, and that's where I feel like it's missing. Okay, and we could add a third, maybe keep what we have and add a third category. So you can see what those other things take forward. Because um, that's where the discussion, I think, as a board, we need to have, like, for instance, the boardroom, right? We clearly know this boardroom doesn't work. When you have public comment in here, we've had points where we had some serious stuff. People are down the hallways, putting mics out. Now you got the other room. And that's all fine if that's all the way the, the future is going to go, is that you're going to let overflow go into a room. You're going to let people come down here for public comment someday. But clearly, this boardroom doesn't really work that well. So, is that scope of work of fixing this boardroom, even if we left it here? Or if the boardroom needed to say, and that's with architectural design work, or should this wall be moved? Or is this wall a bearing wall that can't be moved? And can we change, we make the boardroom a tiny bit bigger and leave it here versus moving it upstairs? Those are the questions that. I feel like before we approve the project, you would want to flush out. And then also, you'd probably want to, instead of a, a number for replacing certain windows, what would all the windows cost? Well, I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying if we're working in a room and we're redoing the interior of this room, I would certainly make a recommendation. If I was a contractor designer on the job to say, I'm gutting this room, let's replace the windows. I'm not going to go change windows that aren't working in, in a room that no one uses. Or if we're just doing a ceiling, or if we're just doing a ceiling or you're not even touching another room in the building, 
unless it's leaking or you got a problem with it, sure, replace it. But I don't want to just skip over a window replacement if we're gutting this whole room. I would want that advice from you guys to tell staff and tell us where we're short sighted in this idea of, oh, we don't want a room, we don't want to move everyone around in the building and re lay out our building. But I certainly want the design team to say, hey, this, there was a deficiency in this room. Here's what we're going to, we got three recommendations. Move it, tear a wall out, change your furniture around. I mean, so. We didn't really get that far in design. I don't think in talking about the department, we would have a Sure. Design. I don't think we'll have those answers by next uh, one area we did make a recommendation was Ryan's recommendation for the cooling strategy, um, which I don't know if this is the right meeting for to talk about that. But that is an example of where we said, you know, you could do it this, this, and this. This is what Wold had priced, and what we recommended was actually more expensive than the original, but it's it's a better solution in our opinion. Yeah, I gotta think our board is gonna say, yeah, then let's do the better the right way. We can explain that greater detail with bullets. Yeah. So it sounds to me like good. Um, take what we have, add maybe where we have the comments. Uh, there were more comments for our team based on our conversations, but we could change those into reasons why we, as far as useful life, um, you know, age, what the new unit age useful life might be, um, any other supporting reasons, and then add a, a, a third category for additional added scope and then recommendations for things that could be factored in because we did do the analysis like the ceiling was probably the best one. and i think it's better for us to have this sort of kick the can now and delay things a month to say our board is going to have a big discussion over two hundred thousand here and two hundred thousand there i'd rather get it over with now than during the course of the project or going back and changing something it's going to help us feel right. confident moving into yes. design and moving forward we don't want to keep Starting and stopping. Right. Just we'll, the longer we wait to get things out for bids, the greater chance that we'll be right. Such an unknown. It could, it could drop. It's, it's hard. Yeah, because that's where I don't even know what ceilings are being replaced. Are you replacing? You know, those are all the things that'd be a lot easier. And that's why I was thinking if you took one of the plans that you have and you would just list on the plan or had notes or some highlighted areas, this is, this is in base bid. Like Dan saying, this is all the stuff in base bid is in red. These are our options that we've also supplied you. And here's other ideas as a design team to say, we think you should definitely consider, you know, and even if we don't have the design done, you put a contingency in there for that piece too. And how we fund it or how we don't or whether we do it, but at least let's factor in the dollars you guys spend the time. To look at it a little more thoroughly than just going off of Wolf's idea. Sure. Um, that makes one, sense. It does. One thing that Ryan and I were commenting on, it, just so everybody's aware, the entire building will have to have the ceiling torn out. Um, okay. So that's already in the budget. Yeah. yeah I see. Oh, yeah. Okay. The yeah, building, yeah. if we had a highlight on there, what we thought the ARP funds would cover of that list also, from my standpoint, understanding the financial yeah. side of that, we had that highlighted too. I, I I think I can. It's not an exact science, obviously, but I think if we had a guideline there would help me understand from a funding standpoint where that's coming from. I think going off this chart for a second, I can talk about that. My best guess. Yeah. It's well, not as ARP as I No, I, I get that, but I think if we had a, just a guide. Already, we already put the qualifier out there. Well, to date, we have never had a grant submission, any of this COVID stuff or anything kicked back, trying to keep that batting average. So I don't want a really good one. When when are we, when are you going to really have a handle on what that guidance is? Uh, I think between I think once we can calculate out if we can show revenue loss, and then hoping in the next week or two between the WCA and then this meeting that all the finance directors in this region are having, maybe get a good consensus idea because what I just have to be able to do is when we report, say we treated this money in this method based on this and this is our trail for doing so 
um, you know, a good solid justification that appears to be within the guidance. So even if you can't do that, when do we know what you can spend it on? Well, that then I would at, at that point I will know. Oh, okay. uh, if we, if we can shift all of it to lost revenue, you guys can spend any of it just like you would fund balance. Um, if you can't, then the interim guidance is pretty clear. As far, and I can go through here and highlight. Oh, I see. Uh, or other projects in the county. Right. Yeah. So we're going to know that in a month now. I, I'm confident that we can be. Yeah, I think we can know if we're going to be able to show revenue last night. Going to be on our agenda item for the future then? Uh, I think the ARPA, when I talk to the county clerk, that's going to be a standing agenda item for this event. Because this committee gave direction that they wanted to, you know, be involved in how that money was spent. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, Telling us our COVID budget update. Real quick before that, uh, Chair, I didn't know that Mr. Rowdy was in the attendee. I moved him to panelist. I think he wanted to speak on number six. Is that right, Mr. Rowdy? Supervisor's not seated. Uh, yes, I did, but. Not too late. Go ahead. We missed you. My question would have been in under uh, the executive committee, but I we're having all kinds of problems getting things out. At the executive committee, I would like to question number 10. I don't think it was brought up today, but it was brought up in public safety and works. And at the last full board meeting, I thought we put this on hold, and now we seem to be still progressing with it. The sports and ag, because there is a lot of questions out in the community that that's taking over the fair. And I'd like to get this. Uh, I'd like to see an answer to it. We didn't appear to have started our committees on the fair either. There was going to be one from the board and one from the fair board. And uh, maybe you are, maybe it's working on, but I haven't heard a word. So that's just my public comment for today. I'll bring it up again in uh, at the full board. All right, very good. Can we, uh, though, are, are we allowed under this to have a little dialogue with the supervisor when they bring that up? It's just not a public comment. Because I can share them as the county board chair on what I know is going on. Do we just well, might it might be better that the entire board gets the hearing rationale rather than five of us get it and then get it again. But maybe that will say, fine, I don't need to bring it up, but that's fine. That's, you know, that's fine. I don't know. I, we, we could get the huge debate. Huh? We could get the huge debate over that. Would be chosen, well, sure. Or we let Doug make his comment. Sure. And, I don't know was on the executive agenda. I know he had trouble getting. Oh, and now it's general government too. Oh, general government. He had trouble getting into that meeting. Oh. To speak when they. Gotcha. Yeah. I could recall it. Uh, you had said that was on hold. I think it was our last board meeting. Well, this chair just told me not to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we, we decided when we discuss it, we'll discuss it as county board. county board can bring it up as well. All right, is that, did you give us the COVID 19? I'll give that to you in two minutes. Uh, costs are coming down for COVID 19. The main thing we have left are the limited term employee costs for public health, for contact tracing, supplies, and stuff like that. But in that COVID-19 fund we established, take out the ARPA money, which I have in that fund segregated, we're about 50,000 of the positive. We've recovered 50,000 more than we've spent, which if you guys remember from the storm, when I walk you through that, that happens sometimes if you do it right, you can, because you can capture more for administrative costs and all, we're about 50,000 of the positive. Good work. That's good work of a lot of people. Um, Sales tax, just a, a quick brief on it. I'm looking at sales tax right now, and we're ahead of 2020 and 2019 as we stand here today. So, 2019 or 2020. I'm sure you had. Uh, understand there's a lag, but 2021, we reported 991,000 so far. 
This time last year was 642,000. 2019 was 710,000. So if you recall last year, we finished about 600,000 above budget at 3.92. That tracks going to be decent amount above budget this year. I think you could see a slowdown though with availability of products in a lot of sectors. I totally agree with you. I also think you could see a slowdown because stimmies are gone. So, but I'm a naysayer, so keep that in mind. <laughs> That's all I got. Well, did you have more? I know you said you were you were touching on a gun item, but more on the rescue plan, the therapy fund. No, I think I pretty much gave you guys everything I know right now, unless you have any more questions. But I think everything I was going to touch on that I discussed with Beth. Are we talking about broadband separately or, or that's one of the categories here, right? Now. We're not, we're still, we're on number 10 right now, Mike. We're just trying to get, we have, we have gone through so much on well, number I, 10 that. Well, I, I'm just wondering if we have broadband on the under 13A and, and I see that the ARP has a category for that. Going to discuss that. Yeah, and the administrator's going to touch on it and then how it ties back to ARPA. That's all we've got here. All right. How about who wants to lead us in a discussion and possible action regarding the recycling? Uh, I think we wanted that on the agenda because last month, if you recall, we had a, a presentation and you were also sent some studies. We just wanted to keep it alive to get your feedback, your concerns, your questions. And any recommendations or ideas you have, because this is something that we feel we need to set policy as to which direction we're going to go. We had two options, uh, keeping the recycling center open, which would require us really to invest in improving it, and making it more efficient, more productive, uh, or you close it down and you have options there. So question I guess I have to you is, what else do you need from us or what direction do you want us to go? After our presentation made at this committee, I think I had more questions than answered by the presentation. But Again, going back, maybe a little bit of the same concept as we discussed about the building renovation work. But I'd like to see more of a broad picture of the goal of the various stakeholders, players, governmental units, and so on in the whole, I guess you call it trash disposal, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna make a little bit of a speech here, but I think society has an obligation to clean up its own mess, environmentally sound way. There's been a delegation of sorts to the county where we're a responsible unit. We've got I guess basically, and maybe there are more than two of waste management and water management that I'm aware of in Polk County. We've got local units of government, the Amory residents contract with Amory itself for their trash disposal. And I think Bright Falls is uh, resident and the private. Smaller, not sure what Osceola is. Uh, to me, if a faller says they're not going to pick up recyclables, that probably means that most people or a lot of people are going to start putting the recyclables in with their other trash. And let it let it go. However, it's not going to get recycled. I don't have a problem with residents of the county being paying for their 
disposal in one form or another, whether it's tax or whatever. I, I, I raised the question when I got a letter from the water minister no longer picking up the recyclables after they had raised their rates a couple of months before that. Now, uh, how this all fits together, and I don't think that anything that was presented last month really answered the, answered the question of what it would look like uh, if this happened, that happened, and the other thing. And I think it, it, uh, one of the things we have to look at is how these private haulers uh, relate to the governmental entities and uh, whatever. So I would like to see a bigger, broader picture analysis Yeah, we got hands up everywhere, but I would say that this could develop into one of those issues where you guys need to first decide how much time are you going to put into this besides the time you've already put into it and come back to us and like give us a dollar figure or an hour figure of what we're still asking for. You know, we're now, I don't know if we're, if we're starting over. On the recycling center, it's recycled. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever it is, but I mean, how much time are you guys going to put into this? And well, until we actually, I don't know. I don't think we're giving you very good direction. Well, that's a very good point, which is why we actually, you know, Mo and others have put in a lot of time in advance, and, and this is a political issue. This is a controversial issue. Staff don't want to do it. No, it's not that. So what we did was we said rather you than all the elected guys, you than us giving you our impression, which seemed to be met with some skepticism, we yeah. hired a professional, objective counterpart with your questions. Your question was, can we shut it down? And if we did, what would it look like if we want to improve the site? And two, if we keep it open, what's it going to take? How much they're going to cost. So really, the the consulting company did what we or you asked them to do. Now the question is, you want us to decide what to do? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, is are we reaching the point where you need to tell us? You need to tell us we've done everything you've asked. There's no more we can do. Make a decision, and now we can do something. I would reach that point. I throw one thing in because it, it hits on you and Mike. I I I don't really agree with Mike's statement that they didn't give us anything because what I heard, and here's just it's going to be a different direction. But what I'd like to propose is we start drafting an ordinance for the county because then I believe we could draft an ordinance and we could work through a process where Mike wants to get all his questions answered. We can work through an ordinance and. We can have an ordinance in place, and that's what I asked that consultant. If we put an ordinance in place and require municipality to have recycling, right now there's nothing requires Waterman says I'm out. If the, if I, the, if the, if the, I do agree with We that. do a couple times a year. And the thing is, is if we would have an ordinance in place, we could work on an ordinance and we could take Brand's concerns, Amy's concerns, Mike's concerns. We could draft them in an ordinance, and then we could see whether what if this ordinance would work. What and the ordinance could have, yeah, we get rid of the recycling center, like I think we should. But it could have it in there. It could have in there a whole range of stuff. We could work on it for a few months, and I think it'd be a way better way to start moving forward because we're never all going to agree at one time on what we've been presented. I agree with Mike on that. If we can work through an ordinance, we all get our little things we think we need to be put into it. That would be my recommendation. John, will you? Okay, so I'm, I'm interested in exploring an ordinance. My concern with an ordinance is that I think the political climate right now is that they want to can't pull the after the campaign and have to be reserved. So that is a reservation I have about an ordinance. But I'm still very interested in, in pursuing and looking at that and analyzing that. 
I don't need more information. To me, the bottom line is page 13 of the report we got. I think recycling is an appropriate uh, service for the county to provide. Um, I think some years it's going to make money, some years it's not going to make money. We don't ask the highway department or the sheriff's department how much money they make. To me, it's, a, it's about service and quality of life. I think that the demand and the need for recycling is only going to increase. It's only going to get more and more as time goes on. We might even, who knows, the federal government might even be passing things down about recycling. The state might be passing things down. So for those reasons, you know, I don't agree with closing it down. Um, I do think that we need to improve recycling for the town residents. Uh, how we can do that, I'm not quite sure. I think one way we could do that is to make it maybe available to have recycling bins in every town hall. Maybe not every town hall. Maybe some towns are covered. But all that stuff you could do in your ordinance. That's um, how you do that. But I, yeah, but I'm not done yet. So I think the cost per household to me is, okay, what's it going to cost the household in Polk County? To recycle. Well, obviously, it's going to be cheaper for them if the county provides that service rather, rather than closing the center and privatizing. So, to me, that is somewhat at the bottom line. Now, I'm prepared to move forward in exploring an ordinance. I'm also prepared to move forward, forward in drafting a resolution in support of option two and having that part of our budget process this fall when we budget for next year. County, if indeed, and I know there's a lot of unknowns and that's why I don't think the time to do the resolution is right now. I think that a resolution should wait till budget time when we have more information about how these monies can be used, whether or not they're gonna go in the fund balance, whether or not they're not going to go in the fund balance. We also have, you know, a million dollar carryover from Health and Human Services. County also has a, a real healthy fund balance. I like that option two, we can phase in if we want to, thus spreading the cost out over a course of time. So to say it's going to cost a million dollars, yeah, it is. It's going to cost a million dollars because for whatever reason, there doesn't seem to have been any investment made in it over the course of quite a time frame. It's been any, you let anything sit there for 30 years and you don't make any investment in it, it's going to go to hell. Any, any building, any, any service, if you don't keep it up, that's what's going to happen. So it's gotten to the point where, yeah, it's a huge, big price tag, big item. So, you know, do we dig in and try to find a way to save it? And there's a lot of good reasons to do that. Or do we just walk away? That's way I look at it. Just one question. What kind of investment that you refer to? We haven't invested in the recycling center. I believe we take out a general fund a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in investment in employees, building, maintenance. I don't think we've actually like developed it into a new animal. Well, I mean, we, the, county, the, 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 the taxpayers have been investing in the recycling center. Since the day it was built. Want to clear. And I guess I just want to clarify I'm referring to yeah. I will say, and, and I apologize, I was gonna pass this out. We do a, a we have a newsletter here. To Fran's point and, and to Chris's point, we have lost money over the years as, as recycling prices have plummeted. But we we and we always reported that. And, and, as we anticipated this year, recycling prices have gone up, and in fact, they're above what we actually thought they would be. So um, that's the tricky nature of this. You know, it's going to go up and down. There are going to be years where we're in the red, years we're in the black. Hopefully, you can keep it right on target. We don't know. One hand, it's a question mark for the the citizen. Okay, what? Well, how much are we going to have our tax dollars is going into this? We don't know exactly. We got a ballpark figure. We keep it within a couple of hours. <coughs> um, but you're right. There
there, there are always going to be a lot of questions, no matter what direction we go with this. Uh, one of the questions that keeps coming up is uh, tipping fees. And my gosh, we put out a tipping fee and, and Waterman's said, well, then we're not going to drop off uh, recycle. Well, he did that to St. Croix Falls. St. Croix Falls has other options to go to. Does Waterman's still tip or yeah. still drop? They still come to the facility and drop. So they still cycle. So there is a, a free market factor going on here. And, and he's making his case and making his point, trying to do what's best interest for his business. Uh, but I do expect other companies will step in if, if Waterman steps out. You know, administrator, and I think that's to me, I feel very comfortable to walk work through an ordinance and vote on these things. So if Fran can lay out to the public and to us and get a majority of votes to say, hey, this makes sense to use this money to keep the recycling center open and be in that business. You know, I my feeling about it is is I want a better recycling program here because the data I seen it only recycling is only a small percentage of our community. So to me, by throwing more money at a recycling center, I would rather throw more money at how do we recycle countywide? You know, how do, like like well, I don't I don't need education. I need a container next in my township. Yes. That's what I need. Yeah. And then we will recycle. But I got people aren't gonna they don't come to Balsam like they go that way. No one's gonna take their trash with them to work if if it's gonna sit in the back seat for three days. Yeah. So I guess that's my point is is that an ordinance. If we would undertake an ordinance process, we could shake out and vote on all of these issues. If they go in it or they don't go in it and start actually getting work done and keep saying, you know, the staff is, I've been asking staff for years, what do you think? Oh, it's your call, <laughs> you know? So I get it. You've given us everything we want. I appreciate everything, but I have no idea what it's you're getting on. down to decision time. Yeah, just to throw more money into their recycling center because we think it's a good idea and it brings value and we don't count the cost of roads. That's a business. It's like the lime quarry. You know, it's kind of the same idea. It's a business. And yeah, I don't agree with that. It's a business. But, it's but a they're service. selling product. They're selling something to make it all work. And we decided as a board, or, you know, there's other ways. The service of the lime quarry, now you have someone in there that has a business plan that's this big. No one is complaining about getting lime. Everyone's getting lime. They're getting it more days a week. They're actually doing a better job. I say the same concept with the recycling center. Why can't we have the same concept? Offer the service. We require there to be recycling throughout the whole county. And let's find a way to do it the most efficient way, cost effective way, but yet recycle better. But I'm not going to hang my hat saying, oh, because we have a recycling center, we're just going to pour more money into it. I would never vote to pour more money into saving a recycling center if it doesn't increase recycling. And, and that's part of, and I agree yeah. with that that's part of the process. Well, Mike has his hand on so, uh, I would move that we. Uh, recommend or whatever the verb is uh, that we proceed to draft an ordinance to cover countywide recycling. We second that. And the discussion, well, the discussion now will be limited to the moment. Now, so Motion. Well, draft the language. Who's, who's going to draft this one? It's you. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how we just turn that back around? Yeah. Okay. No, and I'm. We would need parameters. We would need direction as to what this ordinance would say. We'll work through that over the next six months. We just, yeah, we just need to get going in a direction. Yeah. Okay. This would just. We're not saying you got to bring us something next month. I mean, just. This would get us moving. A question about the ordinance. How about ordinance uh, process? I guess it'll be whatever we decide to make it to be. Right. 
And what I would like to see as part of the organ development process would be financial analysis of what we would need to do with the recycling center to be able to effectively do that. But we're still going to need we, this we information. We want to make sure that we are actually going to do the ordinance before we do all that. Yeah. Before yeah. we do anything. Before we say what we want in the yeah. ordinance. I don't even know what I want in the no, ordinance. We, we need to decide first. If yeah. we're going to take if we're going to if we're going to go down that path. All right, I would say you're just going to call a question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That's the direction we're going. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some happy. Everybody yeah, else in county ordinance. Yeah, <laughs> Chat's good at this stuff. All right, that'll definitely be on our next agenda. We need to have a, but then our conversation will be full on. Yeah, so, yeah, I would think, Chair, the staff could go out and find other counties that have ordinances and bring it. Let's start off with that first. You know, the baseline. Yeah, let's review other county ordinances that they have in place. There isn't any out there, we'll have to be the first one. In my office, you have them already. All right, let's move on to a discussion, update, and possible action regarding planning and funding of county board priorities, county government, broadband, and the parks and trails. Give me one goal. Broadband, I, can, and trails. I can say on broadband, and then I'll touch briefly on parks because we did talk a little bit about this at the last meeting. Or executive meeting. Uh, that was, that was, pardon? We're going to buy a satellite. <laughs> That's the, the satellite up. Yeah. Launch it out of uh, Amory or Twin Lakes, right? The uh, broadband has been a topic that's been coming up for years. It's also one of the priorities of the board. We have had, I think, really good progress with laying fiber optic cable throughout parts of the county. That's done by companies like Lakeland and Northwest Communications down in Amory, Clear Lake, and some others. For the most part, the local companies have really stepped up. It's not feasible for them to go everywhere right now. So the supervisor in Clam Falls may have difficulty ever getting fiber optic cable because he's out in that rural area that's really rocky to get to. Uh, and you could say that about much of our broad rural county. But we have also our population. The majority of population lives outside of a village or city limits. So people in the rural parts of this county need high speed internet. So uh, we are preparing an RFP, just an RFP to send out for a countywide comprehensive broadband study similar to what St. Croix County has done. And what this will do will be to look more precisely at what are the needs of this county and where are the needs of this county? What are the opportunities? What are the challenges? And then look, give us a realistic look at what are the technologies that we should invest in? So is it to continue to incent fiber optic cable? Yes, that will be part of it. What about Wi-Fi? Uh, what about towers? And now with the new technology, which is just now being touted, is the new satellite capabilities of transferring internet service. The bottom line is, is, is it the priority of the county? We need to, rather than just count on our local internet service providers to dig a line and run it to your house, that's going to take a long time and may never happen for many of us. Let's get a better handle on what exactly it is that we need to have done and, and what the opportunities are. So uh, we will look at that. And then when we have the ideas, the plan, the strategy, we can present it to this committee and to the board to say, what are your priorities here? Which do we want to invest in? Which of these are most important? Or do we do all of it or none of it? That type of thing. So that's kind of uh, our hope with those priorities. In terms of 
parks and trails. Uh, we had a, and I don't know for any of you at the opening, I do have, if you want to see a pictorial, uh, what is transpiring with parks and trails? Did we get that to Lisa? But that's good. Maybe check and pull that up and I'll let, we'll go through this. We've reinvested in our parks and trails department by creating a department. Two folks from the uh, Lime Quarry are now working parks and trails. We also have transferred Ben Eiffel from the Environmental Services Division, where he worked on parks, into Public Safety and Public Works to work with Mo and Rod Polk. He's also the liaison with the planning portion that's going on from our county planner and Bob in Environmental Services. We're going to see a significant jump in awareness. We're going to see a significant jump in the use use of our parks and trails. I think as a result of our better marketing and better uh, maintenance of these facilities. Sure. As, as part of the board priorities was parks and recreation. This is what we've been doing with our parks and some of our bull lines and stuff. Um, you can see the picture on the left before and after. We're, we're refreshing everything up. Uh, Clean through, washing everything. Uh, the pavilion up there, a lot of work in the pavilion, new roof, new fascia, paint, just the underside of that roof, the 27 plus gallons of paint to get that back in there. Replace some of these rotted poles on the left here you see. Uh, got one color stain for everything versus having three or four different color stains. Uh, next slide. Uh, painted the water pump. That got a new roof. Um, barbecue right here, this barbecue right here, actually, you couldn't use it because it had a hole in the middle of it. But for cats would hit the ground, that's all fixed. Um, the playground, new sand, uh, cleaned everything up, new uh, uh, equipment as far as uh, washed everything, cleaned it all up, made it look nice, brushed everything back. With that, we are putting two new security lights at Apple River Park here, um, one by the restroom and one by the uh, uh, pavilion there for security reasons. So we have more people in there. Uh, we got new fire rings for there. This one was painted. This was um, done by Sandstone Prisons Welding Unit. We had a contact there, Rod Polk did. Um, they did this for us for just material costs. We just paid for the steel. They made us new fire rings for out there. Um, we chipped and brushed everything. The picture on your right there is the bathroom. The bathroom was reportedly leaking. The reason it was leaking, well, you can see daylight through the roof. The vent pipe here wasn't sealed properly, so that's been taken care of. We installed new gravel on the walking paths and new kiosks were installed. Um, the picture on your right there, Magner Boat Landing had an issue there with customer complaints from the store across the way um, using their bathroom and not uh, paying or buying anything in the store. A simple uh, outhouse there really solved that problem. Actually got a lot of compliments that people have to walk across US 63 to go to the bathroom and uh, re-graveled and fixed the rest of the in there. Uh, future projects, uh, we're moving with uh, fixing, this is that Lotus Lake, uh, that's, been, that's been fixed now. We're working on docks, replacing the docks. You'll see that coming up in our CIP, the budget cycle, as we work to replace our docks areas. Uh, signage is a big thing we've been going up on. You can see the signage there, um, and that's the way they look and we're installed. Uh, not very inviting to us, and our idea with rebranding was making new kiosks, New signage that everything looks like you're going to a, a county park or a county boat landing. So it's one message, one thing, and getting rid of a lot of the negative signage that's out there at our parks. Uh, this is our, our staff right here in the middle is Mark Bierbauer, Mike Ninky. They came from the Lime Quarry. Alexis on the side there is one of our seasonals. Um, they put in a lot of hours. That's one of the new sign kiosks that when you come into Apple River Park, you see. That identifies it as a county park. Um, and again, the new messaging that's going up there with a map of where you are in the county. So, this is how we're rebranding and looking at our parks right now. Um, so, we're putting a lot of time and effort into these. Uh, we just put a new bolt landing ramp in at Long Lake, Long Trade Lake up there at Atlas. That went in yesterday. And working on some parking lot projects on the ATV trails. 
uh, up in Sterling. And again, a long straight lake. So that's how we're invested in their lakes. Where did your budget come from? Uh, the CIP came from the, all that was done within the CIP budget approved by the county board. Um, um, or the pavilion was originally done at, uh, I think it was a $25,000 investment and the budget it had it was budgeted for. Mark and Mike were able to do the roof in house, do the paint. So we utilized funds to continue to upgrade and put more money into gravel and other things. Wasn't any of the money like that was designated tagged or none of that? No, we, ha we haven't touched any of that. We haven't touched any of that. We have a project coming up next month. I'll bring in front of you on a trailhead parking lot in Amory um, at the uh, Cattail and Stour Trail. Uh, we're looking at expanding that with the city of Amory. Cost share with that as part of that money, about $21,000. Um, the recycling bins are getting moved at the trailhead there. The uh, city of Amory is looking at a new location for those that will even free up more space. And we should have additional parking. We'll go with the approval next month on your agenda for that one uh, for uh, trailer rigs to come in and pave it by the bathroom there in the grass. Um, so we have more parking there for uh, machinery. It'll be coming up next month. So on parks and trails, would, would PTAG have something to report? Or go, who do they report? PTAG reports to environmental services. Even though it's money being spent. Well, then it can get BTAG. BTAG actually, uh, Bob is is our uh, guy that runs our BTAG. And then Bob takes anything to environmental services. And if it's a project that's going to need funding, then it's going to have to get approved by them and then by us. 50,000, right? Was already we already gave them the 50 environmental the services. You know, has that, but yeah. for these future things, that's into that 200,000. Is it things like we just seen that, that are getting worked on or looking to get fixed or done? With PTAG? Uh, P with that money, did we oh. allocate a million some dollars? To yeah, that's sitting in at a conference until trade. we have projects to fund. Uh, staff isn't just grabbing money out of that. That's why I asked how this was funded. I, yeah. I thought that that was coming through PTAG. This was something you guys identified and said this has got to get fixed. No, not that. So PTAG is just purely we made some we made four or five like goals or recommendations. Three of them the county's already working on was signage. One of them was uh maybe branding and then one of them was internet access and you know more friendly to hey what do you got in Polk County to go fishing or go biking. And they're already working on those, which were administration. And the big thing PTAG did was uh, this uh, comprehensive trail network planning that's going to take seven months. When that's done, then we're going to probably suck the funds right out of that. Yeah. And start connecting and, and or whatever they come up with. It could be each user group. Is it how many user groups? Six, five, five user groups. That plan is identifying two trails for each user group. And the goal is conductivity. And there'll be a plan presented to the board in seven months. That will require, I mean, these are going to require significant funding, whatever ones the board wants to do. But PTAG is going to hand that off as here's our recommendations. All right. How about uh, any more questions on Tremol on broadband or parks and trails? Any more questions, Tremol? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That would be very hard. All right. We need to review and update our 2021 work plan. Uh, we are going to have a Joint committee with executive next month to hear from the four externally funded agencies. That's the only thing that can show up. Yeah, I'll look, we'll list them. I don't. 
right? Anything else that anyone wants to get on 2021 work plan? Obviously, we're going to put on our recycling, recycling ordinance. Work. Yeah, that so, we're going to try to maybe just keep that a standing issue on our agenda so we can get through it. I would think. If, I'm thinking just if next month, tentatively, if we can get examples from other counties who have recycling ordinances, what theirs are, if we can link to those, that that's a good place to start. Right. How about, well, I guess we're doing the same. We're identifying the subject matters for the next meeting. We have some that are standing. You guys have some. More. My question, Chair, is do we need to hustle up any of our roles to make sure this construction project gets funded properly and gets on the right track? Then having monthly meetings, is, is, is there going to be a need for us to do any other work? That's, I guess, Chad. Well, I mean, Mo can really speak to LHP and what he needs with them. I just, I'm going to call our PMA guy today and update him from today's meeting and talk to him. And in my mind, if I don't have the preliminary design numbers and the preliminary design to push out to uh, lenders in August, I just honestly, I don't think we can make end of the year for borrow. So, I'm not I'm I'm not saying I'm rushing you. I'm just saying if you want to borrow this year, I know you can. I just think chair, we should be prepared that we may have to an extra meeting or two if there's anything to do with making a recommendation. You know, because I, I could see there's additional items we should be putting in the funding package. We don't know what that number is yet. And if we're gonna wait. They said they're not going to have it at the committee in the hall, probably ready. So that means another. I just wonder if we should have two meetings next month to kind of be ready for them. Or have another one at this month. Can we get be ready at this month? Well, that's what we can find out. If we can pull some stuff together, then we'll we'll call and see. We'll call an emergency meeting or we'll just we're going we're gonna to pull, LHB is going to pull together um, from the conversations today um, as much information as they can um, for more clarification on everything. And then when Ann, Ann will be here next um, Tuesday to present, um, and she'll have that comprehensive uh, spreadsheet that they have with a bu it has a bunch of tabs that goes into more detail on everything um, with that. So after that meeting, then it might be, we might need a meeting maybe the following week or the week after, if there's more information that you guys need on that, so it's more clear for a decision making. I want you to think if we don't, if we're not going to, we need to develop a scope of work. If we're going to only develop scope of work at many of the whole, we're not going to get it done in your timeline, Chad. So that's what I'm worried about is I really think committee of the whole better be able to develop a scope of work and then give the authority back to general government. Right now, we're supposed to do doing committee of the whole, and I'm good with doing design in committee of the whole and finalizing the budget. But if we're going to give these guys recommendation, I don't think we can then wait till July then to do it. Then, then it's really what if there's a few more snags? I just think we got to have a goal to say scope of work wherever it gets developed. We should have a goal to say it has to be developed early in June, or we're in June now. Before, before we're out of June, right, Chad? So they gives them time to put numbers to the scope of work. And then I also want to remind the committee it's June, which means right on the edge of budget season. And this committee, and especially now, I am going to speak selfishly, especially me, gets really busy for next month. So, just have a comment and. I mean, I don't have any problem with the committee meeting for healthy or whatever is fine, but um, if we're looking at any meetings, um, I won't be around from about July 20th until the end of the I could probably meet again in June if we hold another general government meeting this month. Uh, I mean, so I, 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 
Could I suggest then if we're going to have a cow Tuesday and LHB and Mill are going to get what they can get done by Tuesday, there's a discussion in the cow, which I would assume some kind of consensus, at least on something should come out of that. Maybe that would give you some working stuff for the following week. Just a suggestion. We could set a meeting for the following week. I think we should, and we can tell Cal that we need to get this rolling. And then we just, yeah, I'd say set the meeting now. I'd rather. There's a lot of wants to stay with a Thursday meeting on a different day or. Saturday. 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 Sunday would be best. Sundays are okay. All right, Thursday at 10. Before. That's the following Thursday after the county board. Okay. Now, it would be me, it'd be better if we did it earlier. Oh, does it matter to anybody else? Yeah, it's at 10 o'clock. Totally 8 o'clock would be a lot better if we're going to. I hate to ask the committee, but I think we're still finalizing that meeting day for the finance directors for this part of the state. And it's between Thursday and a day the next week between nine and noon. And I really feel like I gotta be at that meeting about the article box. Well, as long as we didn't conflict with another committee, it could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, 21st, 22nd. Can it be a different day than Thursday? Me. For uh, Wednesday? Tuesday, what's better, Jack? I mean, I, I'm. That's the only time I just feel like I got to be at that meeting. If it's no. That would give everyone a chance to. So our county board meetings, what? Uh, that that gives them a week after county board. To come up with more numbers, scope of work things. If we could approve them in June to say, yeah, we like those. Then July board meeting, we can actually. You need full board to approve this, right? That would give you that would give you that meeting, and that give you the July agenda meeting before the board meeting. Okay. So we could have the two. Yeah. All right. So Wednesday at eight a.m. Wednesday actually is bad. Well, Tuesday. I can do Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Coming Tuesday, week 22nd. Tuesday following the county board. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Eight o'clock. Eight a.m. Works. Go back to the airport. Ha ha. Eight a.m. My kids come there. Eight a.m. Like the great. All right, the only thing that will be on that agenda will be uh, LHB stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and as long as we're all gathered up, why wouldn't we have the full display? We could talk about recycling. We could really? Are we going to be I, ready to talk? I'd rather just get in and out. Would you? Personally. <laughs> Whatever they put on the agenda, so we'll have to. Yeah. Through, so. I think the only thing on my slide on the agenda is if I can get that. Budgeting resolution, if I can finalize it, I'm just trying to get a little ahead of the game. Talking the number, like the down. carryover, yeah, yeah. forward, yeah. the carry forward if I can get that. All right, well, we got one thing to do. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.